Hello everybody, Jeff Hale here with Comprehensive Outdoors. This channel is made to help you become a more comprehensive outdoors person. Today we have a guest, Mr. Scott Orness. Um, Scott is a guy I've known for about, oh, probably 15, 16 years. He's one of the best fishermen I know. Um, excellent fly fisherman, excellent salmon fisherman, and he's um, one of the few people I know who consistently catches lings, um, not only the straits and and um, out near Nia Bay, but he does it in Puget Sound, and he does it using live bait. So he's uh, he knows a lot more about this than I do, and he's had a lot more success, and we have him as a guest. So let's hear what Scott has to say. All right, thanks, Jeff, for uh, asking me to come on as a guest on your show. Um, today we're going to talk about lingcod fishing. In the state of Washington, lingcod opens up tomorrow, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to get out on the water. Um, I'm going to talk about just kind of an overview of lingcod, I talk about gear, um, locations, don't worry, I'm not gonna give away any GPS coordinates, fellas. Uh, technique and the bite, and how to get those lean cod in your boat. Lean cod are my, my favorite fish to fish for. Um, and the biggest reason, I think, is kind of brings me back to why I fell in love with fishing to start with, and, and that is you gotta have the rod in your hands, and you gotta feel the bite. There's a ton of drama involved. Um, it's exciting, you know, I, I love to salmon fish too, but you know, most of the time you're putting that rod in the rod holder on the downriggers and, you know, waiting for it to explode. But, uh, lingcod fishing is, is a lot of fun. Um, they are a, a, an awesome species. They're like the honey badger of the salt. They, they don't care. And we'll talk about, uh, why that's important as we move through this, but, uh, they're a bottom fish. They are an ambush predator. Uh, they don't have a lot of predators that are looking to eat them, except maybe a bigger lingcod. Um, they're great tasting white fish. Uh, they're one of my favorites. I actually prefer it over halibut. Um, and uh, I'm going to go through some of the gear next year. Let's talk about gear for lings. Uh, first of all, I don't, uh, I've broken more rods fishing for lings um, than anything else. So, and it's not when you have a fish on necessarily, it's when. Uh, you get hung up on the bottom. So I have basically gone to a cheaper stiff rod, okay, an ugly stick. It works great. It's a shorter rod. It's only six foot six, so I can uh, have pretty direct contact with my weight or my jig, depending on what I'm using. Um, we'll get the specs on this to you. Um, I got my trusty Dakota here. I love it, it's my favorite reel out there. Um, I like to have a line counter when I'm fishing for ling cod um, because the, the bottom is changing all the time and if you have a good captain running your boat, they're, they're calling out the depths so you don't get hung up and lose a lot of gear. Um, and that's the other thing with ling cod is, is you're gonna lose gear. You're gonna lose lead, you're gonna lose hooks. Um, it's just part of the game. Uh, let's talk about a couple different methods. Um, I think in what I'm learning, and I still have a lot to learn, but ling cod are very location specific about what they want to eat. Um, when I'm up in, in Canada, um, learned from my buddy Shane, um, man, jigs work great. So a big old eight ounce jig head, and we like to fish the white, I don't know if you can see that, the white power grubs, and uh, just jigging them off the bottom and they'll, they'll smack them. Um, you can try those in Puget Sound as well. Um, when I am uh, uh, up in the Straits, um, in Area 4, I like to fish herring, okay? Herring work great, or if you're lucky, you get a greenling on. And you have a rig set up for that greenling, and I'm going to talk about uh, a little more gear here. Um, but when I, have a, when I know I might be fishing a greenling, I extend these hooks quite a bit, and I try to put the back hook I'm a little farther back and I'll also, if I know I'm going to be possibly fishing greenling, I'll go with, I'll go with a 10 knot hook as my trail instead of an 8 knot. Um, in Puget Sound, I like to uh, fish bait and normally I wouldn't be even making this video, but uh, and about five years ago, not many people were fishing bait, uh, live bait that is, and now there's a ton of people doing it, so I'm not too uh, I'm not too worried about putting this information out there. It's not top secret by any means. Um, I like to fish an eight odd in the back and a five odd in the front on 50 pound leader. Um, 50 pound leader, you know, ling ling cod a lot. Most of the time, when they take the bait, 
they're going to put the whole thing in their mouth. Sometimes they'll grab it on the side if you're fishing a flounder and they'll hold on to it. But a lot of times their mouth's so big, they just engulf that thing. So all that ends up is this 50 pound line and their mouth is shut, you know, with all the hooks and that flounder inside of it. And they're just holding on to that fish. So all you really need to fish for links, six or eight ounce lead. I don't go below, below six. Um, where I like to fish, there's quite a bit of current. Um, you want to have your hooks, your setup, and then you need to go catch bait. So that, you know, bait can be whatever you want it to be. It can be flounder, it can be the shiners, uh, bullhead. Um, like I said before, ling cod will eat anything. Make sure you tie a bunch of leaders up because there's a good chance you're gonna be losing a lot of them. Um, and make sure you bring lots of lead with you. Uh, if all else fails, feel free to try some jigging in there as well. All right, let's talk about technique. Once you get out on the water, uh, first of all, you gotta go get, when you catch your bait, you wanna keep them alive. So I just keep a cooler on my boat, fill it full of salt water, make sure you have a plug in the cooler you're bringing with you, um, and a bucket. And I just change out the water as often as I need to to keep those flounder happy. Bullhead, flounder, whatever you got, keep them happy and alive. Um, I also prefer palm, like hand-sized flounder over the big ones. Um, they just, they, they, I don't know, ling seem to like them a little bit more and I can feel them. Um, I can feel the bite from the ling. Okay, now once you're out and you've got your, your marks, you found your structure, um, I like to start right in the middle of my group of marks um, for my first run. And make sure your snail trail's on, on your GPS. And I set up on the top of it and I find out what direction we're gonna drift. So we'll get a little half drift in there to start with. Um, you wanna make sure your lines aren't too far out behind you. Um, some people prefer braid. I, I use mono mostly because, um, man, you get hung up, it's tough to break braid. And that's, you know, you're gonna break a lot more rods than, than anything else. Um, so you set up on top of it, find out which way you're gonna drift and basically set yourself up again. You're gonna um, end up drifting over your marks. You can back back motor into it if you need to, if you're going too fast, uh, but you definitely want to cover ground. Um, these, these lings aren't necessarily cruising around uh, like salmon are going to be out there. You know, they are going to be sitting in a, a location waiting for prey to come by them and they're going to ambush them. So you want to cover some ground. Um, and uh, once you get off your structure, fire up your motor, get back up to the top of the run and do it again. And I always just try to, you know, even if you're four feet over from where you were the last time, that's good enough. Just make sure you're a little bit off uh, the last run and just kind of keep covering that ground as you go through. Um, as you're fishing, you want to be on the bottom. So I go down, hit that bottom and get up right away. Cause you know, if it's grabby, if that bottom's a grabby, you're in good ling habitat. Um, if it's not, then, you know, we'll see. But uh, you wanna get off the ground just a little bit, let that, you know, your, your flounder or whatever you're using swim. Um, I like to just give it a little action every once in a while, just not a hard jig, but just, you know, slowly moving that flounder up and down so it's got a little more action than it just sitting there. I know some people literally just pull it six feet off the ground, off the bottom, put the rods in the rod holder and leave it. And uh, we've had fish grab, grab rods and when we're not doing anything with them as well. Um, Okay, if you have kids, you're taking kids out, instead of them getting hung up all the time, I would recommend, you know, three, four cranks off the bottom and keep them a little higher. You'll be able to see probably their weight jigging on your, on your, um, on your sounder. All right, let's talk about locations, okay? Ling cod-like structure. So part of ling cod fishing is doing your homework, getting out there, uh, you know, I've gone out before, even before Ling's open and just marking locations on my GPS. Um, looking at charts, pouring over charts, trying to find places where there's structure. And they'll be anywhere from, you know, even 20 feet down to uh, whatever the, the max is in Puget Sound. You know, I don't really fish over, over 90 feet, over 60 feet, barely. Um, so I like to find, you know, structure that's not too deep. Um, in Puget Sound, that is. Let's talk about the bite. 
So as you're out there and you've got your live bait down on the bottom, sometimes you'll feel the, the live bait moving a little bit. And sometimes that live bait gets real nervous. So I always imagine that flounder down there and a big ling's coming in. It's going to be trying to swim away from it a little bit. Um, so I always hook the front hook through the nose of the flounder or live bait I'm using. And we let the back hook, you know, some people will hook it in. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I just, I just let it dangle. Um, I think the, the flounder has a little bit more action when you let it dangle instead of, you know, restraining it. It also gives a little more weight to the, the nose of the flounder, just a little bit with that eight odd hook. And when you're lifting it up and down, you, you kind of, you're going to be lifting the nose of that flounder up and down a little bit more with more weight up there. Um, so the bite, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between, did I, is it the bottom or is it a bite? If I get, if I feel a pull, I'll either do one of two things. I will either, if I know it's a bite, if I know for sure, I'll usually lower my rod tip a little bit and I'll just make sure I really feel it. And as soon as it's, I feel like, okay, I think he's not just gonna grab and let go, I then will reel really slowly, okay? The reason is, is most of the time when this link cod, when that link cod comes into your boat and you net it, it won't have any hooks in it. It will have literally just been holding on to that bait, either on the outside of it, you'll notice from teeth marks on it, or literally it'll be just inside the cavity of the mouth and its lips are tight around really this front of this hook. Another reason you want that 50 pound test right here. Okay. Now, so I will just real slowly, they don't want to let go of that bait. You know, they're the honey badger, right? They don't care and they're just going to hold on. So real, real, and they, they will make dynamic runs. They will, they will bust you up, okay? You definitely want to try to keep them out of the rocks because they will drag you into that structure again, and I've lost, lost fish that way. Um, so real slowly, try to keep them on. I've had massive runs before, then all of a sudden, he's gone. There's nothing you did, nothing I did. They literally just open their mouth. That flounder and everything comes out. No hooks get caught in them. And that's that. So now, as you're bringing, bringing that ling caught up, and it's, it's hard to catch lings by yourself, okay? Now, the only thing you cannot do as you're bringing them up, do not let the nose of that ling cod break the surface of the water. As soon as they break the surface, they're gonna open their mouth and they're gonna let go, okay? So you have to net underneath when they're, they, 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 are, they are not net shy. They are not net shy. So you can put that net in the water. You're not gonna scare them like you know a salmon or whatever. You can put it in the water, get it underneath them, and then bring them into the boat. All right, there you go. That's what I know about Lincod. I've got a lot to learn still. Uh, good luck out there.